Good morning, everyone. Hope this day brings you peace. Welcome back. I'm Sheree Gillitrice. Tomorrow, we go to the gastroenterology specialist for Yahira. It's a day where we have to determine if she gets rid of her NG tube and gets a G tube, one that they surgically place right in her belly. I am a little bit nervous. We have been trying to get her to eat, trying to keep her from having to need this additional procedure. And I feel like she's, she might need it. Um, she eats. I just don't think she eats the amount or the calorie intake they would like her to eat. <laughs> yes. She's had her NG tube since she was a month. They placed it after her surgery so that she could get nutrition. And she's had it ever since then. We've learned how to put it in. We've learned how to check placement, how to change it. So we are used to it. And having something different and new is scary. And also it just worries me having to do a different procedure for her. I just have a feeling that we've kind of reached the end of him suggesting and now he's probably going to be a little bit more adamant that we need to get the NG tube removed. And if I'm honest with myself, I would be nervous not having any way to give her nutrition because she still has days where she doesn't really eat as much as we would like her to eat. So, <laughs> But, um, <laughs> I just want to give you guys this update because... The next video on her update may be us in the hospital. Or it may be us very happily saying she doesn't make it to you. Leah, you want to see Leah? You want to finish the video first? Look. You tired of the video? She just woke up. And her usual day is wake up, get changed. And go see her sister. So she's asking to see Leah. But her improvement has been amazing. From a baby that wouldn't even let you kiss her cheeks. Or touch her mouth. <laughs> to a baby that eats. <laughs> yes, my girl. Yes, my girl. Yes, it is. So I will come back and make another video on the conclusion of her appointment tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm back. It's a few hours later. I wanted to come back because I felt like I didn't express everything. So I've had a chance to finish my hair, do some cleaning, and the little one is running around here making a mess of everything. Just to kind of summarize everything I was saying earlier. She has her gastroenterology appointment tomorrow, and they determine whether they're going to put a G-tube in or if she can keep her NG tube. At this point, I don't think she's ready to go fully without her NG tube because we still, on a nightly basis, use it to get her milk in. Um, she's allergic to dairy, so we give her ripple pea plant milk, and she needs 16 ounces of that every day. I can usually get four to six ounces of milk in her orally and the rest I'll, you, I'll put into her pump at night. But she does drink fluids, she just doesn't drink much of the milk itself. And then when it comes to eating, she does eat many different items and she kind of grazes throughout the day, but I don't think she's hitting her thousand calorie goal and we'll know for certain when they weigh her tomorrow if she's gained weight, if she's the same weight. I don't think she's lost any weight, but we'll know for certain if what we've been doing, which is feeding her during the day and just giving her her milk at night during uh, her milk at night through her tube, 
will know if that's maintaining her weight or if she's gaining. So a few different things can happen tomorrow. They can tell us to continue with the NG tube um, and maybe go up on her calories or change her feeding plan a little. He can tell us to come back, you know, maybe in a month or so if he feels she's close enough or close to where she might not need it soon. Or he can say, okay, look, it's been long enough. We need to go ahead and give her something alternative. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the NG2, the reason that they don't like to have it in for too long is because since it goes in her nose and then down her throat, they worry that it'll cause damage to her vocal cords and her esophagus. And it's so easy to misplace it. Um, we were trained when we left the hospital how to put it in, but it really is easy to miss to place it into her lungs instead of down her throat. So that's one concern. And then an NG tube is not a long-term solution. They generally only like to do it for a few months. And again, he has constantly told us we need to switch, we need to look at more options. It's been my fear of having her have another procedure and of having the G-tube and also my belief that she would be able to eat. Like she is always so close. It has been my belief that she would be able to eat and not need another tube. But here we are, 18 months, we still use it on a daily basis. So we've kind of been preparing ourselves. I mean, he pretty much kind of let us know last time that he's gonna be pretty adamant. If she wasn't eating everything now, he's gonna be pretty adamant about getting her G2 placed. And of course he's saying that it'll, it won't be an irritation on her face, so she won't constantly be rubbing or itching or having something up here and dangling. It'll just be in her stomach doing that, but I guess there's no 100% perfect solution. We have done a lot of research on the tubes. We have seen a lot of other parents who have the tubes. We've seen the pros and the cons, and I guess after our appointment tomorrow, we will know what our new normal is. So I will continue to do updates on Yahira, especially to spread awareness. Yahira's case is not the only way that CDH can manifest. It could be on the right side, it could be on the left side. Um, there can be small holes, there can be large holes. This is just her story and what she's going through. So again, subscribe to the channel. If you like the content, if you like our channel, like the video, and we will continue to let you guys know what's going on with our miracle baby. Thank you so much for watching.